one thing that I'm pretty well known, I guess, in the industry for saying is that management makes money. We all focus on the trade setup, which is also very important. But once you have the trade on, I mean, two people can put on the exact same trade and one can make money and one can lose money. And it's because of that, it's because of what happens next. So welcome everyone to Amsterdam done with Dan Passarelli. Looking forward to talk about his options trading background and how he got into trading, his story as a trader, and a few more tips, of course, for you guys to learn. Uh, Dan, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you here, of course. Looking forward to talk with you about uh, trading in general. Uh, Etienne, thank you so much for having me. Super excited uh, to be here. And uh, yeah, let's, let's talk. I got to ask first, and I kind of want to go back in time and tell me kind of how you began trading in the first place. What was the story like of you becoming a profitable trader? Oh, goodness. Well, the, uh, I'll give you the medium length story. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it was a little bit serendipitous, honestly. Um, I went to college in Chicago uh, for finance. And long story short, I, I literally... I printed up a bunch of resumes, put on the only suit I had, literally knocked on every door of the Chicago Board of Trade building, uh, did it the old fashioned way. Uh, but it worked. I got a job as a runner making 9,000 USD a year. Uh, so, you know, not, not a whole bunch of money. Uh, all my friends are making like 40 grand a year. So I did that for four years. I figure I left about 40,000 or $30,000 on the table for four years. Uh, so well over a hundred grand in foregone salary, but that was paying for my education is the way I looked at it. Um, because I learned from the best in the world, you know, uh, Chicago is where option trading was founded and it's still basically the world capital of it. And, uh, learned the ropes there and worked my way up and ended up becoming one of the biggest traders in my pit at one point. Tell me about the learning curve, because you had the chance to learn from people who are doing this already. But how was the learning curve like trying to learn trading and, and make it work for yourself? Uh, you know, it was uh, it was interesting, especially in, in that environment, um, <clears throat> because, you know, like I, I ended up being a clerk for a couple of traders and, uh, you know, professional traders can have, uh, let's just say, big personalities, Um and so uh, I, I learned from the school of hard knocks, getting uh, yelled at when I made mistakes <laughs> and, um, you know, got to enjoy some of the good fruits of that labor as well. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, it took a while, but because I, I basically my job was to shadow a trader and make sure that I understood every single thing he was doing, because if there was this mistake, I had to fix it before before he even knew it was a mistake. Um, so it was, it was really a, a great, great training ground. And, and a, another big part of that is just the social aspect. When you're around a, a bunch of other traders, you have people to ask questions to, you have people to bounce ideas off, you have people to make you better. Um, and, and you end up making them better as a result of that too, because you learn by teaching as well, you know? So what happens next from there? You kind of learn to trade, you got better at it, and then what made you kind of switch to a different avenue after that? Yeah, so, um, I mean, well, first, going from clerk to trader, uh, you know, once I learned the ropes, I went and knocked on doors again and, and found myself a backer, which uh, before stepping foot on the trading floor, I didn't even realize that was a thing. I thought it was just a bunch of, you know, rich guys whose uncles gave them money to trade with and you know, I, I didn't realize that there's people who would just look for people they thought were smart and, and give them money and say, hey, let's split it and, and have that arrangement. So so I did that and I did that for a good number of years. In 2005, the exchange asked me to come and teach classes for them. And uh, man, I'll tell you, it was um, I wasn't really sure if that's what I wanted to do. Um, you know, there's the old saying, uh, those who can do those who can't teach. Right. And so I kind of looked down my nose a little bit about working for the exchange and, and teaching classes, but, uh, you know, I, I took a flyer, I, I figured I'll try it out and, um, found that that was my calling. Um, it was, you know, when I was a market maker trading in the pits, nobody ever came up to me and, and, shook my hand and said, Hey, thank you so much. Uh, usually quite the opposite. 
Um, but you know, now I sort of have that opportunity to give back. Uh, and I learned that at my stint working for the exchange teaching classes, just being able to, to help regular individuals finally get over that hump and, and make trading work. This is interesting because a lot of people believe that kind of saying of like those who cannot do it, just teach it. And you probably changed perspective on that too in the past as well when you we kind of start to teach people. What would you say is the benefit of teaching compared to trading? Of course, you could do both, but like what do you get out of teaching that you don't get from trading? Yeah. And, and to be clear, I do both. Uh, you know, I still trade every single day. The things that I get out of it, I mean, I guess there's a few things. One is... I mean, I'm not going to say it's altruistic because I have a, a, you know, a business doing it, but man, it sure makes me feel good. Um, seeing people who struggle and it was, many have struggled with trading for years and to, you know, just help them overcome these things that's holding them back and, and, and learn actual, you know, solid principles for trading so that they can actually do it and, and enjoy that financial freedom that they that they know is possible, but just haven't been able to achieve yet. For me, I would say that that's, that's the biggest thing. Taking the perspective of someone who's trying to kind of learn to trade, because teaching can be as hard as trading or maybe harder sometimes because you got to kind of have them change their beliefs, change the way they do things. How do you get someone to kind of learn and really change from the teachings you give them as opposed to just like another book that they read or like a theory class that they just go through? Everyone learns differently. Uh, and, and some people learn well from books some people learn well from um you know watching videos some from just that you know hands-on training but you know the thing is is you can't ask a book uh, a question you know i mean i've written two pretty popular trading books and i believe in books i read a lot of books myself but if you read something and you have a follow-up question i mean you're you're out of luck uh same thing watching a video so being able to interact with people, you know, in our, in our chat room, uh, in, you know, in our one-on-one -on -one coaching program, um, and in some of our other classes, I mean, like, that's the game changer, you know, when I take classes, cause you know, I mean, I'm very into self improvement as well. I do a lot of classes on various things. I mean, I've been trading for 30 years. So I don't really take trading classes, but I, you know, I do for other things to make me a better person. And, and when I do, I, I prefer that human interaction so that I can learn from other people's stories and, and, and ask questions. Uh, I mean, that's the primary way that humans have learned for thousands of years, you know, sitting around the campfire and, and, and sharing stories and passing on information from generation to generation. It's to me, that's the, the best way to learn. We'll get to kind of how you trade these days and the things you kind of focus on, but tell me more about what are some of the common mistakes people make when they, when they take your, your courses or when they learn from you, what are some of the mistakes that they make either before or during or after they, they still take the courses? I didn't learn how to trade just magically on my own or, or reading one book. You know, I learned from, from others on the trading floor. I, I had a mentor. I had a couple of mentors. And so I guess that that's the big thing is that people, anybody who's going to be good at trading ultimately has someone to, to show them the ropes and to guide them and to mentor them, whatever that looks like. I guess one of the biggest mistakes is people who don't take that part seriously. People who say, ah, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw a seven minute YouTube video. I think I got this trading thing covered, you know? Uh, and, and, and they, you know, they jump right into it and lose money. Uh, the market is a very, very expensive teacher. Uh, and a bad teacher, because if you make a mistake and lose $5,000, the market doesn't say, oh, hey, you know, you should have done this. Here's what you did wrong. Here's how to fix it next time. The market just says, thank you very much for your money. Uh, please send more. <laughs> That's a good point. So what are some of the, the mistakes people make? Like, do they tend to always like follow the same kind of typical mistakes? Or do they kind of have different things that they do wrong or that they could do better? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a few categories. Uh, I mean, I could kind of lump them all into just bad habits, really. Um, maybe not appreciating the 
the statistical nature of of markets. Oh man, I came across this quote uh, the other day. Where is it? I hate to read it here. I you know I wish I had it memorized, but uh, I believe this was. Would this be Napoleon Hill? Maybe it is. I don't know. Investing is not getting rid of chaos. It's controlling what you can control and not letting chaos rule your life. Um, and, you know, there's something to be said about that. Like, we don't have any control over the markets. We just have control over how we handle that situation. Like, you know, a sailor can't control the ocean, but a good sailor can can navigate the sea. And, and that's what we do as traders. Uh, that, that's, that's all we do in a nutshell. That's a good analogy for sure. It's a good one. So what is your trading style these days? What's kind of like the thing you focus on as a trader? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> having been on the trading floor for a long time, I traded, I mean, tens of thousands of trades. Uh, every trade known to man a hundred times, you know. Uh, and so when I, when I started teaching, I started pretty general, like, Hey, this is what options are, how they work and go out and create your trading style. Um, and you know, there is some validity to that, but I feel like a people we help need more guidance and B I like to zero in and really get a couple of things down perfectly so that I'm not just hunting the market looking for any idea that pops up. So I personally, and we here at Market Taker Mentoring, we've, we've sort of uh, narrowed down into a few different strategies. We've got an earnings trading strategy that's one of our best uh, that we've come up with. It's a very, very tight system. You know, basically you fill in the date on a spreadsheet and it's a it gives you a yes or no if you should trade it. Um, we trade that only during earnings season. So in the off season, I guess, if you will, uh, we have a, a credit spread trading system, a time spread trading system, a short squeeze trading system. And that's all trading for the investing part of people. Cause I find that most traders, you know, they also have an IRA or something like that too. Uh, we have a really, really great covered call cash secured put investing system with options that I, I trade every single day in my personal accounts. So is this more like on the ends of type of trading or is this more like hands on, like you got to be there every day to place trades? Yeah. So like that to me, that's one of the big differences between traders and investors. Investors, um, you know, I say I trade the the wheel strategy, covered call, cash geared put. I trade it every day, but you know, some of those days it's oh, let's log into the account. Uh, yep, everything's going as planned. Okay, thirty seconds later, I'm done for the day. Uh, sometimes, oh, this one needs uh, a little adjustment. I need to move this. Uh, let me take care of that. And six minutes later, I'm done for the day. Um, but some trading systems do require a little bit more time. Not all of them. I, I feel time is precious. I mean, after all, it is our most precious commodity, right? Um, so, so I, I try and create systems and, and shortcuts that, uh, don't skimp on the process, but make the process easier and faster and more efficient. Um, so I don't know. I mean, most of the systems that I've come up with, you know, again, for me and our, our student traders, I mean, I don't know, they probably take about five minutes of trade realistically. For a lot of people, the option is like this, this market that's like a bit different. Like they don't want to touch it. It's more like they use like placing trades with the charts. Option is like a lot more ma mathematical. So there's a lot more like equations involved. How can you make that more attainable to people, the options market? Yeah, it, it sure can feel intimidating at first. Uh, and it is because you're right. You know, there is more to it. It's um, I don't want to say it's the difference between checkers and chess because, uh, you know, any type of trading is is, is a challenge. You know, it's uh, it's it's a real man versus himself sort of uh, scenario. But the thing about any trading style is that the more 
complicated it is on the surface, usually the more profitable it can be. Um, and this holds true even for, and especially for like, you know, professional traders like, um, you know, Ken, uh, Ken Griffin from Citadel, you know, when he was in college, uh, figured out convertible bonds, uh, you know, which nobody ever did before. And, you know, that they're really basically just a, a bond with a call option attached to them. So, you know, convertible must equal bond plus call option. Um, and, you know, nobody really thought about that before. He put in a little bit of effort up front, uh, you know, maybe I'm oversimplifying, uh, but ended up making a gazillion dollars. Um, and, you know, that's that's kind of how it works when people get into options. It, it'll look intimidating at first, um, but, you know, you just put in a little bit of effort. There's plenty of resources to to learn how they work and what to do. And once you get it down, it I believe it can be much more profitable than trading stocks or futures. A lot of people say the good trading should be simple. It should be something you do that's like very, very clear cut. You're kind of saying it has to be more complicated a little bit. Is that kind of the point or, or how do you kind of see this exactly? Should it be simple, complicated, or like somewhere in between? So by nature, there, there are more data points that, that have to come into effect when it comes to option trading. Does that mean it's necessarily more complicated? I don't know. I mean, you know, when you're a, a kid, you know, you start off with Velcro shoes and, um, you know, sooner or later, your parents teach you how to, you know, tie a tie a bow, you know, um, and geez, you screw it up the first 20 times you do it. But sooner or later, I mean, you, I can tie my shoes with my eyes closed, you know, uh, <laughs> and I think that's what it's like with trading. Like it becomes simple. You dev you 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 learn how these data points work with options and then you go and distill a simple system so that you can just kind of go through your checklist, which is a big thing with, with me and with us, just go through the checklist and make the trade. And, you know, I mean, all the trades that I trade, I can trade in, like I said, I mean, it's usually about five minutes or so. And I, there's not really a lot of thinking about it. I don't, I don't have to wonder what to do this time and, and have that cause stress because, I already put in the work up front and now, I mean, it, it can't be simpler. Like it's just, it, it's, I do this, 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 and this. And if it yields a trade, I make it. If it doesn't, I don't. Simple. One thing I heard you talk about is how to kind of fix a losing trade using options. Do you mind kind of going into how do you do that? How do you look in, into this? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's a few different categories of this. For, for investing, uh, we have a couple of different techniques. Uh, the stock repair strategy, which is when a, when a long-term investment stock holding you own falls between 25 and 35%, and you think that it could retrace part of the way back, we simply buy an at-the-money call option and sell two higher strike out-of-the-money call options. And it's basically a way to make your money back Make all your money back that you lost if the stock only retraces halfway back. Um, and as far as trading goes uh, on some of our credit spreads or time spreads or earnings plays or what have you, we, we have adjustments into part of our, our trading plan. Uh, one thing that I'm pretty well known, I guess, in the industry for saying is that management makes money. We all focus on the trade setup, which is also very important. But once you have the trade on, I mean, two people can put on the exact same trade and one can make money and one can lose money. And it's because of that. It's because of what happens next. You know, what's my plan going into it? And if the good thing happens, how do I maximize that and get out? Uh, if the bad thing happens, it goes against me. How, how do I fix that? How do I do an adjustment so that I can, you know, make another trade to augment that to make it easier to make that back and, and erase that loss? Some people might, might not be super familiar with like, what are the, dif the differences between options and I guess regular trading? So what are some of the advantages you get with options that you don't get in a simple like buy and sell kind of trading? 
it is kind of that um, that that multifacetedness that um, you know chess versus checkers. You you have the luxury of <laughs> it seems like a curse at first uh, that there are more factors involved than just up or down. There's time and there's volatility and there's interest rates and such. And, and it seems like a curse at first because oh no, there's more things to think about. But really, it's oh good, I can potentially put more things on my side. I can make this a higher probability trade. Um, so like, to me, that's the biggest thing is that, is that like, once you understand the, the asset options, it can become, e it, it, it does become easier to make money in my opinion. I know this is going to be like very beginner stuff for you, but give me an example on how, on how you could increase the probability of a trade working out for you. I know a lot of viewers watching this are not familiar with options necessarily. They kind of are new to it. So maybe that could be a good example to, to share. So uh, with options, there's a directional component. That's one of the factors that uh, affects your profitability. So let's start there and just compare that to, uh, you know, trading a stock or a, or a future, which uh, a friend of mine who used to work at Citadel would call those uh, linear products because, I mean, if it goes up, and you're lying, you make money and it goes down, you lose money. That's it. That's the whole story, you know. And yes, that's totally oversimplifying because there's a lot of thought that goes into, you know, that and, and your trading plan. Where do I set my stop loss? All that, you know. So I don't mean to make that sound too oversimplified. But you also have that when it comes to option trading. But you have a time component. And in certain scenarios, we might put that time component on our side. We might do an option selling strategy so that every day that passes, I actually make money from the option losing value as time passes, in addition to any directional sensitivity that we have. Um, and then there's the, the implied volatility aspect. There's a, a supply and demand for the option itself. So even if the stock doesn't go up or down, the option can still gain or lose value because of people buying or selling those options, creating demand pressure, supply pressure. And when what I do and what I teach our student traders to do is to, is to analyze that and to look for opportunities where the options themselves are either overpriced, which is more often the case than not, or underpriced and select an option selling strategy or buying strategy respectively. And yeah, we might be planning to make money on direction, but if I've also got this time thing on my side, I've also got this implied volatility thing, you know, very intentionally on my side, I can just set the odds so much more in my favor of winning because, you know, instead of, Instead of doing a good analysis job on one thing, I'm doing a good analysis job on, you know, three or four things and putting them all in my favor. And so there are times when I could I could be wrong on direction and still make money because I'm using these other tools that are embedded in the price of an option. Interesting. Definitely a lot to cover here. I know you have books on this topic. People can learn through your books. They can definitely read them. But I know you prepared some resources for the listeners that you want to share with them. Can you tell them kind of where they can find this and how they can learn from you? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I like to say that trading is a journey. I mean, it is an adventure. Like, it is your story, your family's story. And, um, you know, one thing that's really revolutionized our industry over the past uh, 20 years now is technology and it keeps doing so. And so um, I did something a little special for your, uh, for your listeners. We've got this brilliant guy that runs our technology and stuff. His name is, is Bobby. And he figured out a way to create this uh, choose your own adventure video, which um, I don't know if everybody knows what that is. Um, some people have read these choose your own adventure books uh, and they're kind of fun. So we, you, you've got to see it. So Bobby created this and uh, I think you're going to love it. So 
you might be driving in your car right now. You might be out on a run or mowing the lawn, whatever it is you're doing while you're listening to this podcast. When you're done, when you get home to your office or wherever it is, you know, on the couch with your laptop, when you log into your computer, before you check your email, uh, go to markettaker.com slash desire, uh, right? So that's market like stock market, taker like take what is rightfully yours, two T's in a row, markettaker.com slash desire. And uh, check out this video. It's it's kind of fun. It's interactive. Uh, you know, you answer questions and it uh, takes you to a different part of the video. And uh, you probably learn a lot about yourself and about trading. And it's a, it's a really neat opportunity. Speaking of learning about yourself, do you feel like there's better personalities for options versus like regular trading? Or is it like a, a thing where you can just learn it and then get better at it? Oh, man, I'll tell you. I think that... 99%. Well, actually, this is pretty interesting. Uh, what I was about to say is, you know, 95% of people probably can become great traders. Now, you've probably heard the statistic as well as I have that 95% of traders fail. <laughs> um, but I think that most people uh, well, how do, how's the best way to put it? Have the personality. Uh, I don't, I don't think there's many, uh, personality things that really make it detrimental as a trader. Um, I think, th I think the only personality trait that makes it really, really hard to trade is, uh, like overconfidence in yourself. Because again, you know, we, we're not, making things less uh, chaotic where we're navigating within that chaos. Um, I mean, the only people that I see where it's just impossible to, to make it work are just people who just have that overconfidence. Like, Oh, you know, I, I, I'm right because you're not right. Like there's, I mean, that, that's not the point of trading to be right. The point of trading is to take money out of the markets, you know, and navigate this chaotic sea of, uncertainty. Um, so as far as why do 95% of people fail, then, um, you know, it's just, I think sometimes people um, don't fully appreciate that it is a skill. Uh, and like any other skill, I mean, you have to learn how to do it. it it's, it's not magic. You don't watch a seven minute YouTube video and hey, now, now I know how to trade. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to go and have brain surgery from somebody who watches seven minute uh, video on how to, you know, saw through your skull. Uh, that would probably not work out super well. Uh, you know, um, the, the more it's like anything else, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And um, you don't have to study for years and years and years and go to college and, you know, make it a 40 hour a week job to learn how to do it. But you do have to learn how to do it. And when you do, man, it can become a wonderful, fulfilling thing that brings you towards financial freedom and, and financial security that lots of people enjoy through trading. Wise words. Yeah, that, definitely a good point there for sure. Thanks now for your advice. I appreciate the, the tips you give my listeners. People can check out the resources you've put below. We'll put the link in the description for that. People can check it out directly. I appreciate your time, the advice you gave. Hopefully you can catch up soon and discuss more trading. That'd be cool.